Okay, so I'm underneath the uh, 93 Kenmore washer. I got the case off. I didn't bother showing you that because there's a thousand videos on YouTube showing you how to remove the case. The symptoms of this is that it's not agitating, draining, or spinning. It just hums. So there's two culprits. Either the start capacitor here or the motor itself is bad. I have, I have a new capacitor. I have a new motor. I'm going to replace them both along with the clutch and I'll put a new motor coupler in it too. That's why I got it taken apart. Might as well just give it a little bit of an overhaul. Let's see if I move the pump. These spring clips. Everything's so rusty. So I'm going to go ahead and lean on and say I think the motor's bad. I can turn this by hand and there's something in there that's not turning yet until I start and it's kind of stiff by hand. Of course, it's probably because it's still connected to the transmission, but... We'll test the capacitor. To test it, you're going to need a voltage meter. I'll set it to AC voltage. Doesn't matter what scale. You should get a spike in voltage around 5 volts for like a second, then it drops. If you get that, it's good. If you don't, it's bad. Just connect these two wires. Doesn't matter how they go back on. They're even come off. I have to splice them onto the new one. Yeah, they don't even want to fucking come off. I think that also answers the question that the capacitor is bad too. Managed to get one connector off, but in trying to get the other one off, it literally ripped out the capacitor. I can always put new connectors on it. This thing's in such sorry shape. It's not from sitting out here in the shed. It wouldn't have gotten this rusty. So it's probably sat, sat in someone's uh, waterlogged basement for a while. Hopefully this wasn't a flood machine and that's why it's failing, but... I'm gonna give it an overhaul. Try to make it last a little bit longer. That screw's rusty here for the foot. So I'll give it a little bit of an overhaul. So let me go ahead and take the motor off. Motor's out. It turns freely, so maybe the motor's good. So I'm going to put another one, a new one in it anyway. I'll keep this one as a project. No, if it does run, I can, be, I can put a pulley on here. And make a custom box fan. Get an AC fan blade. Just got to figure out which, how to wire it up. So like which make it figure out which direction I want it to turn. Make a belt drive thin. Thing be a monster. So hold on to it. Got the coupler. This one's got the metal in it. I'm going with one without the metal. So I gotta get this plate off and get that coupler out. Pumps pushed out to the side right now. So, then I can tilt this thing back, get the transmission out, so I'm going to put a clutch in it, too. Turn the, the coupler by hand. The agitator does agitate, so transmission's good, so it's, so it's either the capacitor or the motor. The capacitor, obviously, you know, I had to physically break this off almost to get it off. I might just put new connectors on it. So, let me go ahead and do all that. Whoever worked on this thing before me, this was supposed to be a plastic piece in there along with the metal spacer. And they're both missing. Machine still runs though. Let's see some paint peel it off of here. And this tub's now crooked. So I was using it to kind of tilt this thing back and forth. So now it, leans, so now it just wants to lean in the back. Springs are still attached. We had to stretch some springs or something. Let's see how it does once there's water back in it. 
Didn't mean to zoom in there. Put the agitator out. Now I can tilt it back and get the uh, transmission out. Transmission's out. What a fucking bitch. It would not slide out smoothly. I actually put pliers on here. See the marks. And then twist it by hand. So I could freaking uh, ooze it out. And I just sprayed WD-40 out in there. It'll hopefully make it slide back in easier. That just would not come out for shit. So it's out. Thrust washer. C-clip, another clip. Pop this out. Brake cam. That needs to come out, that's broken anyway. Gonna put the clutch in. I got a new clutch. So, nothing's supposed to be easy. This thing's not easy. I finally got it out. What a fucking bitch. Quick tip, if the little ears or tabs on your old brake cam break off in here, this simply slides out and just tap it. Then you can take your new cam, stick it on there. And you got the C-clip, which holds it. These are your brake shoes here for the tub. This is your uh, basket drive here. The shoes can be replaced. Same thing, C-clip, pop them out, pop the shoes off. You got the spring here. It works similar to uh, a drum brake in your uh, car. The shoes ride around the inside of here. This whole insert here slides out. But you gotta remove the uh, basket drive. Well, that's what the basket, this thing is a basket drive. You gotta remove the, uh, I forgot what the damn thing is called. There's a couple things you gotta remove from inside the tub. You got the drive block. That's what I was trying, that's the name I was trying to think of. The drive block. I think that's it. And then this whole thing should theoretically just slide out. And you can replace the shoes if they're worn out. So I think on x ray one xs machine, he's got a busted uh, tub brake. One of the shoes is worn out. So all you have to do is order the new shoes. Pop the C-clip out and s slide them in. Just be careful with the spring. Alright, new motors in, new clutches in, new motor couplers in. New capacitor is installed on the new motor. So the only thing left to do now is put the cabinet back on, I guess, and well, ins reinstall the agitator. Put the cabinet back on. And focus, bitch. Turn it back on and hopefully it fucking works. I had to bang the transmission with the rubber mallet to get it in place because, you know, it was a bitch getting it out and it was a bitch getting it in. I don't know why it was put up such a fight. But it's in here now. So, see if it actually runs again. Alright, cabinet's still off. I got it plugged in. I bypassed the lid switch up here, inside here, right there. Need a couple connectors and a uh, some electrical tape to insulate it. Got to set the spin. See, right now this is locked up again. Hopefully it works. Who knows? I probably busted the damn transmission trying to get it in and out because it was being a fucking bitch. Didn't want to come out, and half the shit's missing that they put in here anyway. But. See what happens. Let me put the camera uh, somewhere. So I may have to uh, unplug this or something if it doesn't decide to work right. Let me see where I can put this camera where you can get some shots. I don't have a tripod on me right now. I got it propped up on the clutch right here. <sighs> so. I assume that's the clutch that it's aiming at, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Will it work? Will it not work?
didn't seem like it was spinning very fast, but. top speed. But it's running. the metallic sound is. Alright, maiden wash is repair, filling up to a maximum water level, max cycle. I just let it spin through the uh, thing. If it squeals, it squeals, you know? Rolls up, blows up. I'm done. The thing fought me the whole fucking way. I shouldn't have been this goddamn hard. The clutch, I put it back exactly the way the pieces went. I don't know if it's slipping or if it's squealing because it can't handle it because it's new or what. I'm going to put this on a tripod and we're just going to film it. I'm going to go and abandon it for a while. And see what happens. See if it survives or what happens. If it starts smoking, if it blows the motor or capacitor or what's going to do. At this point, I don't give a fuck. I'm done. I'm going to put this on a tripod and we're going to see what it does together. Without right, further ado, this is going to run without interruption. If it blows up, it blows up. It leaks, it leaks. I'll babysit the agitation for a few minutes just to make sure it doesn't leak. After that, I'm just going to go inside and let it self-destruct if that's what it does. I'll buy a new machine in the springs. I'm done. There's no reason for the agitator, I mean, not the agitator, but the transmission to be that fucking hard to get out. I come out a few inches and stop. I had to physically hammer it out. And then actually put a pair of vice grips on the transmission shaft and twist it to finally free it. It would not come out for shit. And the same thing, going back in, I had to hammer it in with the rubber mallet at the bottom of the transmission, so I probably damaged it. And that's why it's squealing, because it would not come out or go back in. There's no reason for it to be that hard. All the machines I worked on, they're not that hard. It could be squealing because WD-40 could have gotten on it from spraying the shaft. We know it spins, but it agitates. Will it drain? Go it over full. Um, we got a problem. It's not shutting off and filling. Oh, what's the motherfucking problem now with this hunk of shit? Alright, so I sucked some of the water out just to about below the uh, first to let water line here. So, let's put the spin. Let it spin the water out and let it self destruct.
it drains. over. I guess I gotta take the cabinet back apart or at least figure out why it's not wanting to uh, shut off when it fills. Now I'll show you what I found. That's the hose that goes to the pressure switch. That's why I wouldn't shut off. The hose came off. So then now the hose is back on there. Hopefully it will fill and shut off and agitate like it's supposed to this time. Like I said, this is the lid switch connector. I cut the two wires, left the ground one in place. Back to then I should just reconnect that, like that, just so it's grounded. And it's got the two wires spliced together. So let's go fill it up again, huh? <laughs> 